This is Evangelist Pat Talbert. I am uh, continuing our lessons on the biblical principles of Christian growth. <clears throat> the Bible tells us we're to grow in grace in 2 Peter 3.18. We were teaching a series of lessons on Christopher Columbus who didn't have charts and stuff and tried to come to Asia and didn't know where he went and didn't know how he got there, but uh, he didn't have the charts. Uh, in the Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, once we trusted Him as our Savior and believed that He died and was buried and rose again, and trust His blood for payment for our sins and receive Him into our heart, the Bible says that the Spirit of God baptized us into the body of Christ and we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And the agent that God is using is the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truths. And the Holy Spirit will convict us, He'll guide us, He'll teach us. And the Holy Spirit will illuminate the Word of God as we study the Word of God. And it's very, very important that we take a new Christian and we help disciple them with the Word of God. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And Joshua 1 8 and Psalms 1, uh, <clears throat> verse 2 and 3 talks about meditating in the Word of God. Uh, in James 1, 21, he talks about the engrafted word. Uh, the biggest failure we've made in our churches today is we have not engrafted the word of God into people's hearts. You say, how do you know it? I can get up in front of a church and I can put up a $100 bill for anybody that will stand up and quote me a Bible verse on, let's say, a, a drinking and alcohol. They can't quote me a verse. They know it's in the Bible. They've heard preaching on it, but they don't have it hidden in their heart. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in Matthew 4, he said, It is written, and he quoted Deuteronomy uh, 8.2 to Satan. Then Satan tempted him again, and he quoted another verse. Jesus quoted the Word of God, but we haven't learned to follow Jesus yet. We don't have the Word of God to quote. And probably five or six verses in our lives that we've had problems with for 10, 15, 20 years that keep recycling and coming back up in our life to our thought life, uh, we need the Word of God to deal with it. The Word of God and prayer is the two weapons that he tells us in Ephesians 6 that we're to take the whole armor of God. He says, above all this other, take the armor of God, which is able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. In Luke 11, 24 through 20. Six, he talks about he goes away, the bad spirits, and he comes back and brings seven more. And uh, we, get, we get busy criticizing people, saying well, they must not have got saved. Uh, no, they must not have got discipled. When a person gets born again as a baby Christian, they have to be discipled, the Bible says. We're to go in all the world and we're to preach the gospel and make disciples. So the discipleship is in grafting the Word of God into people's lives. And there's, I guess, five or six top things on beliefs that we need to put in a person's life. We said not just any change will do. He tells us to take off in Ephesians 4, 22, the old man. And through 24, he says in Ephesians 4 that we're to put on the new man. He says in 2 Peter 1, verse 4, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of a divine nature. The new nature that comes within us, he says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a mystery in Colossians 1, 27. He said, it's a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He comes in through the Godhead of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells us. It's a down payment. He says in Ephesians 1, 13, that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide us. This down payment is there because Jesus is coming back someday, He's not going to desert the Holy Spirit. He's going to come back and rapture us out. He tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 19. And we're going to be drawn up in the, what we call the rapture and meet the Lord in the air. The man we led to the Lord just two weeks ago, that uh, the doctor come in and told him, Big John, you're going to die. You've got three different cancers in your body and three different parts. We can't help you. We're going to put you on medication. We're going to help you with the pain. We're going to move you. And she explained that to him while I stood there, and then I was able to introduce him to Jesus. And he's passed away now. He's in heaven. He's got a new body. He's with his loved ones up there. And Jesus says in John 14 that I don't want you to be ignorant, he says, 
concerning these things. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again to receive you unto myself. It says, in my Father's house are many mansions. And uh, so Big John right now is in heaven with a new body and his loved ones that have passed on and with Jesus, and he's got mansions and all kind of new things, five no mores the Bible talks about in uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 21. So what we're finding is, is a person needs to know. Dr. Kesey is teaching, and you can go on the Christian World TV and uh, YouTube and Dr. Jim Kesey on the 38 benefits that a person gets when they let Jesus in their heart. When they turn to Christ and trust in Him, the Bible says that uh, they become a child of God. And when that takes place, there's a lot of benefits. So we use the illustration of a tea bag, putting in a cup of hot water. It turns the water into the flavor of the tea. The pressure of the water in the hot water brought out the flavor in the tea bag. The pressure of life that we go through and the adversities and the tribulation. He says in Romans 5, verse 3, tribulation worketh patience. See, God is trying to conform us to his image. He tells us in the book of Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. He's trying to get us to think and act like Jesus. Now that we're saved, we're to put off the old man and start thinking like Jesus would think and act like Jesus would act. So he uses adversities in life. He uses problems in life. He uses tribulation. He says, tribulation work with patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope. Hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit in Romans 5, 3 through 5. So we have a purpose that we go through and trials and stuff that we go through. And God uses different trials, different irritations, different things in our life to help us uh, to find the pearls in each trial that God's using to help us to grow to be like Jesus. We're being conformed to the image of Christ now that we're saved. This is called biblical growth. A big biblical transformation. Uh, basically, the church calls it sanctification. We're being conformed to the image of Christ. So we take the tea bag. I had a, uh, a pack of M&Ms the other day I picked up, and I had a pack of M&Ms. And I used the M&Ms as a picture. Uh, two things I've got to do. I've got to find some Bible verses that deal with my subject that I'm having trials with. If I'm angry, if I'm uh, irritated, if I'm frustrated, if I'm going through tests and stuff like that, the test is to help me to grow like Jesus. So the pearl from the test and the irritations that I get up and bring up and I see what it is, it's actually revealing what's in my heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, the Bible says in Jeremiah 17:9. So God is trying to change our hearts. He put Christ in our heart, and he's trying to conform us now through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the big cat, the Holy Spirit, the D7 dozer that plows down the trees and stuff, the big powerful engine. Well, the Holy Spirit is that powerful engine that directs and guides us and everything, and he's going to bring up or allow irritations in our life. People irritate you on your job, at home, your problems with your family, problems with different situations, and the irritations were to find the pearl in there that God's trying to get out of our life and what he's trying to put into our life of the character or the nature of Jesus Christ. We used the illustration of a, uh, of a man who uh, was dating a girl and he loved her real uh, a bunch and he was going to ask her to marry him and he was dating her and everything and their anniversary was coming up. They'd been dating a year and uh, <clears throat> she had a problem. She had allergies to daisies. Uh, for some reason, her nature, she got around daisies. She just had a, a broke out, all kind of problems she had, so she couldn't be around daisies. So on their anniversary, would you say he should get her a bouquet of daisies for the person he loves and give to her for uh, her anniversary? No, because he loved her, he wouldn't put daisies in her life because she was allergic to them. It went against her nature. The nature of God does not like sin. And we don't want to put sin in the presence of God. He won't even allow it in heaven. 
That's why Jesus, his son, came and died and was buried and rose again and paid for our sins with his blood because it had to be paid for. So what we're finding here is to become more like Jesus, uh, we're finding that our greatest problem are not those people or things around us on the outside, it's what's within us. Those people are bringing up what's in us. We get angry at somebody. We get mad at somebody. Our, our uh, way of dealing with it is we're going to get even with them. We get on the phone, we tell everybody about it. We complain, we gripe. Uh, we want to get even with them. We want to hurt them. And God says, okay, now I see what's in your heart. Now let's deal with it. So God will use people as agents to bring up what's in my heart so I can be conformed to the image of God. I am conformed to the image of Christ through the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit will enlighten the Word of God as I do this. And there are certain things that we want to put into our heart that are very important. And these things that we put in our heart, the wellspring uh, of who you really are comes out of your heart. He said, out of the heart proceedeth. And he talks about the things that come out of the heart. So what we're finding is here that a person... Uh, is going to grow as a Christian. We use the illustration of a canoe. We used to go up to, uh, 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 it was in Georgia, a big youth camp. Dr. Johnny Pope and Dr. Ron Riley would come up there and we'd take our young people up there. We went canoeing. And we'd canoe down the river. As we canoed down the river, the river would flow four or five miles an hour and you can get going at good speed and everything else. But if you turn your canoe around and try to canoe upstream, uh, that's a whole different story, trying to canoe upstream. Uh, the pressures of life, the tribulations and the trials of life bring up what's in our heart so we can be conformed to the image of Christ. God uses the Word of God to do that in prayer. We engraft the Word of God. He says the engrafted Word was able to save your souls in James 1.21. Uh, we have not learned how to engraft the Word of God. If you can't quote me a Bible verse you learned a year ago, you haven't engrafted it. You just learned it for a test, or learned it for a class, or learned it for something, or learned it for a subject he was teaching, and a year later you don't know the verse. It's not engrafted. The engrafted word has to be in our soul, and the engrafted word will come out of our heart. He says in Proverbs 4, verse 23, he says that we're to guard our hearts. And what we're to do, we're to guard our hearts because out of our hearts comes these things. And we're to find out it's not the people's problem that's causing the irritation. It's not the, the circumstances around us causing the irritation. Uh, God will allow the circumstances of the people to cause it. But it's revealing what's in our heart so we can grow. We have to grow into the image of Christ and become like Christ. And we do that through the Word of God. Now we gave you the illustration uh, about a young man. This young man was uh, in the yard playing with his ball and stuff and his daddy said, don't go out of the yard. Stay inside the fence. And we use his fence as boundaries. The fence keeps evil out and we have a little gate where we take evil out and let good in. And this young boy was supposed to stay inside the fence. He kicked the ball over the fence. He jumped the fence, went into the street. The car hit him. And when the car hit him, it broke his arm. And he come back, and they had to take him to the hospital and get a cast on his arm and everything. And he said, Dad, will you forgive me for breaking my arm? Surface problem, he broke his arm. Root problem, he disobeyed his daddy. He went out of the yard. God has taken from our hearts and shown us the root problem that's causing what we're doing, the, the language we're using. The, if we get angry, he tells us to put away anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy and filthy communication out of our mouth. All these processes that take place are revealing things in our heart that we haven't dealt with. A young boy was 10 years old. Uh, his daddy said, look, I'm going to the mission and, and I go all the time. The next Saturday we're going to take off and we're going to take you fishing. He was all excited. He went to the neighborhood. And when he went to the neighborhood, he told the neighbors, he said, I'm going fishing Saturday. I need some tackle. Can I cut your, may I cut your yard, please, and make some money? 
and he cut three or four yards. Everybody in the neighborhood knew he was going fishing Saturday. He went down to the boat dock and saw the guy at the tackle shop. He said, I need some tackle and this and that. He says, I'm going to go fishing. Daddy's bringing me down here Saturday, and we're coming fishing. Saturday morning, he's up and got dressed. 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, he's dressed, sitting on his bed, waiting for Daddy to get up, and he heard the phone ring. He said, yes, and his daddy says, well, no problem, I'll be right down. And somebody couldn't make it to the mission that day, and they called for him to come in, and he hung up the phone, he heard his daddy go and get dressed, runs on down to the mission. His daddy was uh, going to the mission, doing the Lord's work, but his son was broken. Uh, at supper that night, they was eating, and mom and dad was sitting there, and his son was real quiet, wasn't saying a word, and said, what's wrong with you? Nothing. You see, he had a wounded spirit, and it caused a communication breakdown. From there, he had an alleation of affection. He lost his affection for his daddy. He become ungrateful for all the things he did for him and everything because of this wounded spirit, and he rejected his daddy's authority. He become stubborn. He established his own authority, and he become open in his rebellion. And then he had friends at school that were just like him. He found a companion and a bunch of people that he ran with for his rebellion. He got a bunch of wrong friends. From there, they got into what they call sensual desires. And then he defend all the sensuals. You see it all over the TV and now that people are defending what God says that uh, is not going to be uh, what, what God wants you the best for your life from the scriptures. Uh, so they have a deep sense of guilt, and when they do, uh, they start condemning other people. They criticize everybody. And what happens is that leads, leads into what we call a list of suicides. We have all kinds of suicides and mental health problems and stuff going on in America today from depression and mental health and uh, just different things that are taking place in their life. But uh, you want to correct them for the bit of depression, or you want to correct them for the wrong friends, you want to correct them for uh, their uh, open rebellion and all these different things. Then they get into drugs and all that. Uh, and you want to correct them for it. But way at the top of the chart was a wounded spirit was never dealt with. And that comes from the heart. Dealing with that wounded spirit is what God is concerned about. And there's some biblical principles, biblical lessons we can put into our heart to help us with what we call these uh, beliefs that come in our heart. He tells us in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it's impossible to believe God. All right, number one, I've got to believe in God. And that comes from a belief from the parents, or the teachers, the pastors, the Christian workers, friends that are teaching me God's Word. When I read the Word of God, the ministry of the Holy Spirit that came into me when I was saved teaches me and confirms the Bible is the Word of God. And I am confirmed. When I trusted Christ, I never seen Jesus, but I let Him in my heart. I talk to Him every day. I pray to Him every day because the Holy Spirit makes Christ real. The Holy Spirit is ministering to us and helping us in these areas. So what happens is, is I have a belief system that Jesus and God is real. And then I have a belief system that Jesus was sent to save us. He tells us here in Romans chapter 10 and verse number uh, 9, he says this, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, here's a heart belief, there's another belief. You believe in God, now you believe in your heart. When you believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He says, For with the heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So <clears throat> another verse that I should have in my, in my heart in scripture is, I ought to believe that Jesus was sent to die for sinners and tell people about it and spread the gospel. He says, the, the fields are white and ready for harvest, but there's few labors. So pray for the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth labors. I was at Daytona uh, a week and a half ago at the spring break with Dr. Ron Riley, Ambassadors for Christ, and we'd go up to groups and we'd talk to them. We'd say, welcome to Daytona Beach. We're from the Ambassadors for Christ. We just want to ask you about your heart if you died right now, do you know in your heart you would go to heaven? 
Well, I'm not sure. And we would talk to groups of college students and people, and they were very respectful to us because the Holy Spirit put a hush around them. And three and four and five in a group would listen to the gospel and the Word of God. And we saw, I think it was 360 some college students, families accept Jesus into their heart to be saved on 18 miles of beaches there with people from West Virginia and Tennessee, all over the United States come in with their youth groups and they were trained to witness for Jesus and give out the gospel. So when we believe that the Holy Spirit sent us to do this, he tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, we're baptized by the Spirit into his body, so we're a family. He said you receive power in Acts 1, 8, once the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And he says, go and you shall receive power. So we go out there and, and we don't know who's going to be ready, who's going to be expecting, and we find out God had people planted right on purpose to be ready for Jesus Christ. I preached in a jail yesterday morning over in Clearwater, and three young men uh, from the jail there, uh, there were 3,200 in that prison there, and uh, they uh, accepted Jesus as their Savior. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, see? And he says the Holy Spirit seals us because Christ said he's coming back for us someday and going to take us out. And the Holy Spirit's there as a down payment that he comes back. And then the, the tribulation, he says, will help us to grow to be like Jesus. And then he tells us in Galatians 5 and verse 13, the next thing we do in Galatians 5, 13 is service. Uh, I talked with a man on the phone last night about 10 o'clock in Tennessee, and he went through a drug program, and he went through the detox, and he's in a program now for six, seven months now, and he's out serving Jesus, going into junior high schools, talking about how God delivered him through Jesus, through the drugs. He's gone to prisons, he's gone into jails, he's gone into communities, and giving his testimony, and he's serving Jesus now. He not just got saved, he didn't just go to church and get some Bible lessons. He got into God's service. I was talking with a pastor yesterday. Uh, over 100 people in their church go out on a visitation every week telling people about Jesus, following up people. Uh, they have over 100 from their church go out every week. See, he's taught them to do service for Jesus, and that's important. So he tells us in Galatians 5.13, these words here. He says here, And brethren, you have been called into liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion for the flesh, but by love serving one another. So God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He tells in 1 John 4 uh, that God is love, and he wants us to share this love with other people and go out and do this. And then the spiritual heart that we have in Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 23 we're to feed the Word of God and get our heart as the irritations and stuff bring up what's in our heart, renew it and put in the new man and the Word of God. And he says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So your whole life and your spiritual heart comes from engrafting the Word of God into your heart. And I tell people use the m and method. m and is is... Uh, Memorize and meditate. Or you can use the map method, okay? Uh, you can memorize, you can analyze, and you can personalize the Bible verses in your life. Only four or five verses that deal with the heart that you can implant in your life and keep the rest of your life. So we call it the uh, engrafted Word of God or meditating in the Word of God. And then prayer, uh, I use the ABC prayers. I, I start with, I prayed coming down the highway today, I prayed for... Uh, all my A family members that I know of and people that I know in A's and in the B's and the C's and I went all the way through the ABC's praying and I'll pray going back and as I pray God will bring up other people to put in that list and I pray A through Z every day people and intercede for them in Jesus name so in grafting the word of God and prayer will help you to grow to become more like Jesus God bless you